musicians and bars getting beer. Bisto Blanco. What's happening? How are you? How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks awesome. for having me. Oh, thanks for being on. Uh, so what are you doing tonight? Another Toronto, show? Canada. Yes. Budweiser stage. Alice Cooper, Deep Purple, Edgar Winter. Edgar Winter even. Wow. So yeah, you're man. playing with Alice? Yes, I do. 15 Which is, years now. 15 years with yeah, Alice. Right. That's awesome. And uh, many recordings with Alice? Well, yeah, I started in 2001. I did Eyes of Alice Cooper, Dirty Diamonds, Along Came a Spider, Welcome to My Nightmare. So, yeah, I've had quite the year of touring and recordings with Alice. That's great. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Um, and uh, what's, your, what's your solo project all about? Well, I wouldn't really call it a solo project. I'd call it a band. Visto Blanco is a band of brothers and sisters. We're, we're a rock and roll band. and we, uh, We've all known each other for many years, and uh, we're finishing up our third studio record as we speak. Uh, we're going to release a live record in November as well. So. We've toured many times over in Europe and in the States, and uh, we're just going to keep going. Well, this is a very modern project. How would you, uh, yeah. what genre would you say? I mean, if you had to put on one or two You know, or I like five. to <laughs> stay true to just my rock and roll roots, right. man. I'm a child of the 70s, and, but I grew up with uh, different genres of music. You know, my dad was a bluegrass banjo oh, really? picker, and uh, so I have a lot of country roots as well. But, um, you know, I was I loved Queen. I loved ACDC. I loved, you know, Kiss, just like anybody else. Uh, uh, bands like that, you know, Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, that really sure. influenced me. Uh, but then t took it into the next level of, of new genres of music with Rob Zombie, Motorhead, yeah, bands that like that that I, I love so much that have you know been a big part of our molding, if you will, of uh, Bisto yeah. Blanco and molding of myself. Uh, you know, so we're just we're, I consider us a rock and roll band, a very current rock and roll sounding band. Right. You want to talk about the old days? I mean, you've been in so many different bands. Yeah, man, I've been fortunate. Yeah, yes. Yeah, thanks for saying that, man. I've been very fortunate. I've uh, started my career with uh, playing with Ronnie James Dio, and we did several tours over in Europe and Japan. Um, had the opportunity to write with Ronnie, and I uh, got a song on the Masters of the Moon record, which was the last awesome. record recorded by uh, by Dio. Uh, a song called Death by Love. Uh, still keep in touch with Wendy and the, and the guys. That's a big part of who I am. Playing with Ronnie was uh, was something that just. I was, it was unexpected in my life. I mean, it was a, a, a guy that I admired musically, uh, loved his voice and loved his, his songwriting and, and loved him as a person. And we developed a really strong friendship. Uh, I never expected that, but um, it's something I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. I think Ronnie really shaped me as a professional um, performer and a, and a guy in the studio as well. He was very instrumental for me. So, but that was after the turds and, and all your early, early stuff, Early right? stuff, yeah. So. Turd was an old, you know, kind of like Iggy Pop, you know, John yeah. Spencer Blues Exposure kind of band that we had a lot of fun with. But it was just an excuse to get out of the house and drink some beers and, you know, cause some trouble. So did Dio change your life or was it another band? Uh, but Dio was pretty much the guy who put me on the map, right you know, and then they, which, which helped get me the Alice Cooper gig, which is therefore growing into... The wonderful career I have now, which is, uh, you know, being with Alice now 15 years and getting to open for and and and, and play with some of the, the giants that are that are yeah. still legendary to, to today and and helping me develop, you know, Bisto Blanco and uh, and uh, you know I've learned a lot from Alice as well as far as songwriting and, and lyrics go and, and performing for sure. So uh, when you get your own Grammy, the Bisto Blanco Grammy, who are you gonna thank for that? I mean, other than the guys that you've worked for your whole life. Well, I think I guess I would have to start with the people that uh, that are that have been with me the whole time. I mean, you know, I appreciate the uh, the optimism. I, I believe that um, in order for you to get anything you want in life, you got to visualize yourself being there, and I do that every day. I wake up, I meditate. I go to bed, I meditate. When I'm on stage, I'm I'm putting myself to where I want to see Bisto Blanco or myself, and it doesn't necessarily mean. Grammy to me would be a wonderful thing. I mean, that would be fantastic. That's definitely not going to be something I focus on other than just uh, constantly creating something that I believe in. Musically, uh, it has to resonate within my body and right. within my, my soul and, and you know my rock and roll heart, if you will. Yeah. If it doesn't, then uh, it's not worth it to me. So whether it gets recognized in that 
uh, field, that would be fantastic, obviously. Uh, I would accept it and cherish it and love it for about eight minutes, and then I'd move on <laughs> to the next thing that I'm doing with uh, Bisto Blanco and whoever else I'm playing with at that time. Yeah, right on. Like, uh, how long was the stint with Gene Loves Jezebel? <laughs> Man, you're like really going minutes. into the Wikipedia, huh? <laughs> yeah. That was about eight minutes. <laughs> Guy still owes me money. <laughs> So, yeah, but that was just a quick gig. That was yeah. a one-off. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, but they've all, you know, it's, to any of you kids out there that are playing music, you know, you got to really take everything that comes your way. And Gene Loves Jezebel is a band I, know, I knew about. I liked their music, but really wasn't something I honed in and learned to play a lot of their songs. But it was definitely an experience that shapes you and molds you and helps you become a better musician. So you got to be able to be versatile to work in this industry. Yeah. You've got to be able to play different styles of music. You know, I have nephews that are you know, in their 20s, and when they were in their teenagers, they were playing speed metal, and all they wanted to do is play fast, and yeah. they'd say, Uncle Chuck, Uncle Chuck, you gotta listen to this riff, and I'd say, I'm not gonna listen to a single riff you have, I will listen to a Beatles song you can play me, or if you can play me a ZZ Top or a blues riff, I'll listen to that first, wow. then I will listen to your metal riff. They, well, I don't know how to play that stuff. I said, well, when you do, I'll listen to your music. So then next time I'd go visit them, they'd play a blues riff, and a Beatles riff or whatever and then I'd say oh, okay let me hear your metal song well now they're 20 years old they're great musicians well rounded and uh, one of them is producing albums and uh, I think uh, played a big part in helping yeah, him just great. become a better rounded musician you know you must have some crazy stories from the road I don't want to you know do anything that's going to uh, uh, ruin any record deals here <laughs> like that, but if you want to tell any stories or, or well you, you know I've had some pretty fun times on the road and uh, I, I, you know nothing that's like uh, snorting ants or anything like that but uh, you know one of the craziest things I think that's happened to me was uh, you know with Alice Cooper on stage when he's uh, um, Billion Dollar Babies, he's wielding the sword, you know, and, and one night we were in Russia, I believe, and instead of having a sword, he had this knife, knife, <laughs> with a sheath that he had it in, and he couldn't get the knife out of the sheath during this part of the song, so he throws his thing down, and when he did, the sheath flew off and hit me right in oh the collarbone, and I thought he stabbed me with the knife. Well. I'm known for kind of a hot temper and I can get a little intense at times, you know. So I think I just, I looked at him and I just started charging him and he looked at me back like, oh no, like, because I, I thought he kind of stabbed me, but I just took a step back like, what is happening? And I, I looked down and I realized it was just a sheath, not the knife. And we both had a good laugh about that that's after the show. One. But uh, yeah, that's as wild as it gets. I mean, want to talk about any great places that you've played well, in. I think there's any place where there's a good rock and roll fan base is a great place to play as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not just copping out on that question. Sure, I could say, oh yeah, Italy's great. And it is because it's one of my favorite European countries to visit. Um, but you know, you go over to Finland, you go to Germany. Uh, we just, Bisto Blanco just did a full run with the Versailles Uncles over in Germany, which was, uh, you know, 19 shows in arenas. Uh, we did Germany and Switzerland, Austria, places like that. They're all fabulous places because they have great rock and roll fans. Uh, we just played a, 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 a dive bar, the, the dirtiest dive bar in the south in Birmingham, Alabama, called The Nick. And it's just the ultimate CBGBs of the south, if you will. And it was just packed with just rock and roll people. And that, to me, was a great place. And it's in the middle of nowhere. It's probably next to the ghetto. But all I, I just love where people are at. People are, you can, you can feed off their energy, you know. And so I think anywhere you got a crowd, that's the place to be. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so you talk about down south. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, was that? Yeah, I live in Nashville, yeah. Yeah, you live in Nashville. Yeah. And uh, so apparently the scene's going crazy down there. Yeah. Not just country music. Well, I think Nashville's always been pretty versatile with their with their music I mean it didn't take me long to get set up with with guys that I had the same interest with with you know I think Nashville is just the difference with Nashville is that it's the best of the best so country is obviously the the heart and the blood that pumps through Nashville and, and likely so there's some amazing talented musicians there some of the best songwriters in the world live there but yeah, it is sort of growing into a place to where there's more versatile music. You can go see country and you can go see rock and roll. You can go see blues and jazz. 
Um, but the, the beauty of it is, is everybody sort of plays everything, you know, and it's a great place to see music. For me personally, I like to live in, the reason why I like to live in Nashville is because I can go see some old school country stuff that I grew up on and, and just stay away from the rock a little bit and just do something that's a little bit different because I find myself getting more uh, inspiration from that style of music and that style of guitar playing than I do necessarily rock and roll. Uh -huh. you know? Well, that's your dad's. Well, not only is it my dad's thing, but I just think there's a there's a truth yeah. to a good country song, and uh, and there's a there's a there's a way that it, it's delivered, not only with the the tone of the voice, but the, the lyrics, but also just the way the guitar is played. Uh, I have a real appreciation for you know a good flat picker and, yeah. and a real good you know good guitar player that can play that chicken picking, if you will, kind of country style of music. I love it. And it's, you'll hear a lot of it on on, uh, on Bisto Blanco's latest record, uh, self-entitled record song, especially like Death Rattle. You'll start it. You'll, you'll hear a little bit of the country roots and the blues roots in that song. So that's one of your influences. And, and what's the Latino part? Like, where do you get the Bisto Blanco? Uh, well, not necessarily. It's is it Latino? It I mean, obviously it is. Uh, if you break it down uh, and uh, get literal, but uh, Bisto Blanco basically just came from. The music had it has sort of an animalistic vibe to it, and we, we really were experimenting with our own sound and our and not only with our own sounds, but when you do that, you have to you sort of face your own fears, and you sort of I was faced with obstacles going. Well, wait a minute, I'm going to be singing, fronting this band. I'm going to be taking on a lot of responsibilities. In order to do that, I sort of I had to create a character. I really felt like I needed to be something on stage, and Bisto Blanco was. Uh, a name that sort of came to to us is uh, something you could summon to you know when you when you have these fears you could you could face the fears and summon some courage as well so it's sort of my inner Hulk if you will you know and I think it could be that for anybody because regardless of it being just music or I have some maybe some some reservations about what how I am as a performer or whatever I got to get through those because people are waiting and I got to face my fears. Everybody does that, whether you, no matter what you do for a living. You're, you're a kid in school, you, you have to deal with some bully, or you know, you, you're, you are a bully, you got to stop being that way. Or you're a, an individual who um, you know, uh, wants to start a business, or wants to learn guitar, or whatever it is. There's always obstacles every human being goes through it. So maybe you just find this sort of inner beast, if you will sort of find a way to break through those obstacles and get your ass in gear and, and see what you can accomplish instead of just being inward, be outward. So obviously your music speaks a certain tone Absolutely. about you. Yeah, yeah, you can hear it. I mean, in the song Grind, you, that's the Bisto Creed right there, the Bisto Credo, if you will. Uh, you know, I may not have been born with, you know, with a crown on my head, but mom gave me muscles and knuckles instead. <laughs> and I've had to use those muscles and knuckles a lot in my life to get to where I am. You know, especially growing up. So, uh, you know, that's that is what uh, what we're about. You know, we're blue collar. We're, we're hard workers. So uh, right now, Bisto's uh, going to start a, a run in December. We're going to do Europe, starting over in France, Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, Switzerland, um, Scotland, Sweden, Oslo, Norway. So yeah, we're going to do about 12, 15 shows over there in December. Then we start up at the uh, Monsters of Rock cruise, okay. February 11th through the 15th. And then uh, we're in the process now, like I mentioned earlier, of releasing a, a live record from Berlin, Germany. You can look for a release in November. And then uh, we're also in the studio as we speak, uh, work, working on uh, the third Bisto Blanco studio record. And the stuff is sounding amazing. It's really have we really have developed a sound, and uh, we found our producer. We've we it's it's a lot of fun now. You know, it's it's a, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's something that uh, we're gonna do for a long time. Great. Well, you know, you've been really busy lately, and it looks like you're getting even more busy for next year. So. Yeah, man, I'm afraid to slow down at this point. Yeah. So you were in Pittsburgh last night. Yeah. And Toronto tonight. Where are you going tomorrow? Come on, man. I think uh, Detroit. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Right. See, my memory, I still night. have my memory. Wow. <laughs> three nights in a row. Do you often go like, three nights in a row like that? 
Um, yeah, that's pretty common. I mean, when we were with Motley, it was three nights, one day off, two days on, day off, three nights. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's three nights is pretty typical. You know, I think that's, that's uh, you know, when, when Bisto tours in December, we have nine in a row. So, we don't have time to slow down. What was that tour like with Motley? I think I saw that one last year. Well, a lot of fun, man. And Those man. guys are great guys. And I was, was it Mellow? It was cool to be part of something that I watched them you know, I've been a fan since Too Fast for Love, obviously, sure. and, uh, and been, you know, grew up around those guys, and uh, it was cool to get to know them and tour with them and hang, and yeah, it was mellow, but it was a lot of fun as well, man. Look, I really appreciate this. It's no been problem. an honor to have you on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. Yeah, you got it, man. And, uh, or gonna, soda you, water. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you drink. Cool. Musicians in Bars Getting Beers rocks, baby. Hey, still Blanco. Thank you. Cheers.